Good evening, and thanks for checking out our Saturday evening Eyewitness News webcast. I'm Haley Pianco. When she arrived at the hospital in Pottsville, the staff was wondering where the newborn child was. The opioid epidemic has created an increase of children in crisis in our area. They're angry. They feel players are disrespecting this country. It shows me how this happened, explaining that this little latch was unlocked, meaning when Electra jumped on the door, it opened. New information I'm told today by police is that it was a brutal death. And that's when a deer jumped through this window, shattering the glass. Earlier today, I went to their house to hear for myself what they're complaining about. As you can see, there's a lot of snow coming down, and I want to know just how much. Good evening, Mark. I'm practicing some of the stretches I learned earlier today at the Scranton Half Marathon Expo. Stretching before and after is a big part of making sure you have a successful and safe race. Marines hope this event is a slam dunk. Right now, we are with the dairy cows. So I'm going to ask Marsha a couple questions. So tell me, why are you here at the fair this week? Good afternoon. Welcome to the area's only lifestyle newscast, PA Live. We are here in the PA Live kitchen today making burgers without actually using meat. As you can hear, they're pretty excited. I am shivering. I am freezing. You know what? I've had it with the snow. They're still asking that you do not park your cars on certain roads. While some folks were fighting for bargains this holiday shopping weekend, others were just fighting. We're talking about a night of boxing to benefit kids. Another key part of a successful run, staying hydrated. I get four handsome valentines. How lucky am I? He's about to make another round and I'm going to join him. We're going to head over and get some of these roads clear because he's cleared them already a couple times but it just keeps falling and it keeps covering those roads. Oh wow, this is a big jump. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Live in Gordon, Haley Bianco, Eyewitness News. Mark, it was an unusual day in what's normally a quiet neighborhood. State police responded to a deadly family fight just before 7 this morning, leaving a family heartbroken and a community in shock. Unbelievable. Not the way you want to hear um, a family member. What, what happened to a family member? Kimberly Gower still can't believe this is her new reality. State police found her 66-year-old mother, Sandra, stabbed to death inside her home on Market Street. My mom was a wonderful lady. Everybody knows her as Nana. The victim leaves behind six kids and 16 grandchildren. Two of them were inside the house when the family feud went down. Gower tells me her 43 year old brother, Alan, and 17 year old nephew were also inside the home. Police say the teenager is the prime suspect. He has some issues in the past, um, so it's not unknown. It's just that when you try to ask people to help, the system failed, is all I can say. Gower tells me the grandmother and grandson had a good, loving relationship. She probably gave him the shirt off her back, the last food she could eat. Um, so I just think that he was um, troubled. Both Gower's brother and nephew sustained injuries and were taken to the hospital. They were also taken into custody. Neighbors watched from their windows as cop cars blocked off Market Street. It's just a sad situation that it happened at all. It's just very shocking for a small town. You never do know what, what happens behind closed doors. The 17-year-old is still in the hospital and remains the prime suspect in this case. Live in the control center, Haley Bianco, Eyewitness News. Buckets of these river rocks are now in every classroom in Blue Mountain School District. Superintendent David Helsel came up with the idea for what they call Go Buckets. We're empowering our teachers and our students to do something. He tells me it's the last line of defense in a series of protocols the district follows when there's an intruder, explaining if the intruder overcomes the other safety features, like getting in the building, getting through the locked doors, and overcoming the barricades, then the teachers and students will reach for the rocks. We're going to throw them at a person that comes through the door as hard as we can. If they hit somebody in the head, it could actually knock them out or even hit them in the temple and it could kill them. The bucket of rocks is secured in a safe place in each classroom. Parents have been informed through meetings and open houses. Teachers and students have prepared and practiced with drills, but they do not throw the rocks during the drills, just discuss it as a last resort. Of course it's a scary time, but we have to do the best we can to protect all of our students. It gives me just a little bit of confidence to know that our students aren't 
just sitting targets. District officials believe the rocks will also serve as a deterrent, saying now that people know they're prepared, hopefully an intruder will think twice before targeting their schools. The superintendent tells me under current laws, this is the best he could come up with until something changes. I'm not sure anyone has one answer, but doing something is better than sitting and doing nothing. I hope that they feel a little safer. In Orwigsburg, Haley Bianco, Eyewitness News.